Josh in Springfield, Illinois. Josh, thank you for calling Catholic Answers Live. Uh, tell Trent Horn why you are pro-choice. Hi there. Um, I am not starkly pro-choice, um, but I basically view it as a uh, right to uh, cease uh, supporting something that depends on you uh, for life. So I, I draw a distinction between killing a child, which is, uh, you know, capable of, uh, you know, eating food and beating its own heart and things like that, uh, as compared to something that's living inside of you and, and depending on you for food and nutrients and all that. Okay, Josh, so you're saying that when a child is really, really helpless, the parent has the right to not help them and kill them, but then after the child's born, when they're just helpless, uh, if the parent were to not help the child and let them die, that would be wrong. Uh, so no, no, no. I didn't... No. Uh, you're not allowed to... So, yeah, when, when the child's born, you're not allowed to, to let the child die, but you are allowed to abandon your child, right? Wait, wait, well, you can't just abandon them in the woods, right? This is true. You're not allowed to abandon them in the woods. You can't kill them. Or you might say you have to place them in someone... Let's say they say, well, you know, we can't take your child right now, Mrs. So-and-so, for another 48 hours, and Mrs. So-and-so says, I can't handle this child another minute, and puts them outside, and it happens to be January in North Dakota. Yeah, So I guess that, that just seems odd to me uh, that, okay, so you're saying that when it comes to a born child who is helpless, for sure, you have to help them, and they're, they're a helpless little creature, and so they, they have a right to your assistance. But when they're unborn, the only difference is they're just a lot more helpless, and because they're more helpless, they don't have the right to that same assistance? How does, so that, how guess, does that follow? So, because um, I, I, I actually, uh, you know, I had a lot of, of uh, I tend to lean left on most social issues, um, but I, I, this one is not, I always you frequently go back and forth on this. So one thing that I heard, have you ever heard of the, uh, the argument of the, uh, what is it, the, I think he's a, a violinist. The violinist guy. Right. There's a there's a violinist who knows where a group of other terrorist violinists have planted an atom bomb in New York City. Actually, I'm thinking what, of an entirely different one. <laughs> I, no, that was the ticking time. I'm sorry. No, I'm just I'm just, just I'm messing like, with I'll, you, Josh. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look this one up. This sounds interesting. No, I've I've heard uh, this one. This comes from Judith Jarvis Thompson in her 1971 essay, A Defense of Abortion. The idea is yeah, so. you wake up one night and it turns out you've been kidnapped by the Society of Music Lovers and hooked up to an unconscious violinist because you're the only one whose kidneys can filter the violinist's blood, do you have to stay plugged into him? And Thompson says, well, it would be nice if you did, but you don't have to. So you have the right, right to unplug from the violinist, and, you, and he dies, but that's not right. your problem. To me, that seems to not be a correct analogy for abortion on several reasons. Number one, in that case, that would only work for abortion in the case of rape. Because, yes. uh, because of the consent uh, fact. I understand because, that. Yeah, because I you, actually heard a slightly different version of it, which is this. You are driving a car, which you, when you're driving a car, you are consenting to all of the terrible things that might happen to you uh, by driving that car. And through no fault of either of the persons, you are in, involved in an accident. With mm -hmm. this violence. Still there, Josh? To save his life, you're hooked up to him. Right, okay. Now, for that, I think it would still be a little bit different uh, for several reasons. Number one, driving a car is not naturally ordered towards the condition of having someone connected to you in order to live. Not Now, pregnancy, the, the case of having someone connected to you there, is the natural end, the ordinary natural end of sexual function. I know that because we all went through that at one point. So to me, while it would be extraordinary to ask someone to stay plugged into an accident victim through a car accident, it's not extraordinary to ask someone to do that through pregnancy. Also so, because, oh, let me finish, also because okay. in, in that, these cases, it's extraordinary to ask of that because my kidneys aren't made for another person. But the uterus itself, it is designed to sustain the life of, of another child. The second point, Josh, would be this. There's a difference between killing versus letting die. If, if for some reason I'm hooked into someone and they're uh -huh. dying and my body's saving them and I disconnect, the reason they die isn't because of me. They're already dying from some other kind of injury or disease. But in abortion, you don't have a sick person who needs you to live. You have a healthy person. And when you, you rip them out of the womb, that's just straight up killing them. So I think there's crucial I, I, differences I, from the analogy. I don't see it quite that way. And, and again, I, I, if you don't have to convince me that, that uh, abortion is not a nice thing. Obviously, 
Um, but I, I guess I would draw a distinction between what's what's good and and what's uh, allowed, right? I might view uh, the because I, I I do view an an abortion at least in you know probably not late term, but I, I don't know how I can draw that distinction mm-hmm. with any objectivity. It's basically well, Josh, let me let me tell it. you a counter analogy. I use in my book Persuasive Pro Life that I owe to my friend Tony George. I call it reverse violinist. Suppose okay. the society of mu- music lovers goes out on the town one night. And they like to drink and carouse and have fun. And they know there's a chance they'll get a bit too tipsy and they'll plug one of their members into an innocent person who will need them to live. And this person wakes up and finds out they're connected to you. They knew this could happen and you were dependent on this violinist to live. And the violinist says, this Josh guy, well, he's totally dependent on my body. I don't have to sustain him. So he unplugs himself from you and then you die. Okay, I understand the distinction here because it's... It's uh, in that case. Well, yeah. Here's why the the violinist analogy, Josh Thompson's analogy, it works because you are only looking at the situation from the. the... Also consented to this to the possibility of the situation where the uh, uh, fetus has no no control. The violinist analogy focuses solely on the woman's perspective. Yes. Not the child's, which is you can turn it around by saying, "What if you were the violinist?" And through, and through this other person doing things have, have put you into this helpless condition. So, yeah, if you want to check out my book, Persuasive Pro-Life, I have a whole chapter devoted to this kind of bodily rights arguments. You can also search for a guy named Francis Beckwith. I think it's called Unstringing the Violinist, but he's written a, a lengthy rejoinder to that. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Uh, yeah, all right. Interesting. I, I'm, I appreciate the, the show. I, I, I'm an atheist, but mm. uh, and normally when I hear... Uh, you know, religious channels uh, talking about this stuff. It, it's not very interesting to me. There's a lot of a lot of Bible references and, and stuff that just because I don't follow that, it, it isn't relevant to my uh, argument. I can't argue with that. But you, so, but you say we do it differently. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the way that you conduct these. So thanks. Oh, I like that as a blur um, for us. Before so. you go, Josh, real quick, uh, if, I don't know if uh, Trent, you or Nick or Darren or someone, I, I know you do at Catholic Answers Live, don't you do Why Are You an Atheist shows as well? Oh, that's um, right. I, I think, so Josh, keep listening to the show. Uh, next, we'll go online maybe to... Yeah, go online to Catholic. Look at the show calendar. Yeah, yeah. Catholic.com backslash radio, Josh, and you can find, I'll be doing another show, I think next week or the week after, called Why Are You an Atheist? August 26th. Yeah, so we can keep the conversation going uh, that way. Those are always a lot of fun, too.